All right. Uh, I know it's been a little while. It's been about three weeks, actually, since I last uploaded something. And I wanted to get some more stuff out there. I know I'm not as consistent as I should be, but I'll keep putting material out there and every chance I get. Um, I, I did want to show off one of my latest projects that I've done. This is a uh, 60 size. Uh, that's 10 cc's for everyone else in the world. Of a plane that I enlarged and did some changes to. I put airfoil on the uh, horizontal stab. It's not a lifting airfoil, but it does create a lot more efficiency with your um, with your airflow over it. And I've got flaps here, and and of course I, I I like to put in all my servos with all my servo mounts and everything. And another thing I did here was I actually put in the push rods, and so I will know where to cut my slots on my laser once I get to it. I've got to do some adjustments with this, but that works. And then, so I, I, I have my servos and stuff in here, but one thing I don't do, I don't draw all that stuff. I will go and look for these things, cause, and then I'll store them in my, in my library. But there's a lot of good places you can find them for free on uh, GrabCAD is where I found these. And GrabCAD's where I found this OS61 engine. Of course, it looks like a two-cylinder, but it's really not. What I'm going to do is 3D print um, an exact copy of the engine that I am going to use so it actually looks like a two-cylinder coming out of the cowling there. But, uh, yeah, that's, that's what I've been working on. But anyway, in this video, we're going to talk about elliptical wings and um, uh, and even how you can loft airfoils and a couple of other things that, that go along with that. And hopefully I'll get into the intersecting curve thing, which is really, really cool. So the first thing I want to do, um, I, I want to bring in the airfoil and hopefully everybody was able to get that uh, airfoil tool airfoil dat to spline so the one thing you have to do is select your construction plane as we've talked about before I want it here and then your um, the size of your airfoil so I'm gonna go with 10 inches or 25.4 centimeters or 254 millimeters for the rest of the people um, and I actually created a folder where I I put all my dat files so it makes it pretty handy for me. I don't know why my machine's running slow. I gotta get a super fast. Um... Okay, I've got a Clark Y in here. That'll work for this. All right, and there it brings it in. And again, it's gonna create a sketch, and I want to edit this sketch. So one of the things with the Clark Y. This is just a little bit about aerodynamics that I know. I don't know that much, but a little bit. So it usually flies with two degrees um, at a positive angle of incidence. And it's really close. Like, this is not really flat on a real Clark Y. You modified Clark Y, they'll just flatten this out. But the real Clark Y is not that way. So... One thing we can do to um, to give it the right angle of incidence, it works out perfect if you just line up the bottom. I'm gonna go, I gotta go negative two degrees here, and you can see it's pretty close where it this will sit flat on your fuselage or whatever. See that. Um, that line goes just about right through it. So about two degrees is going to give you where this is correct on your angle of incidence. And I should probably move it back a little bit. And again, I appreciate everybody that's subscribed and that's watching my videos. And I, I hope I hope that you're getting something out of it. Um, I think that's that's uh, that's that's the main thing. So one thing with this elliptical wing, because we have this positive incidence, we have to make sure that our guide rails, because we're going to do a sweep here, 
we're gonna have to make sure that our guide rails or you could do a loft but actually touch this this profile so I'm gonna come in here and it looks like this is about the tip and it's not dead accurate but it's gonna be close enough for us and that's the center of the line back there and then let's um, let's make that a uh, construction line okay so we're done with this sketch now what we need to do is we're going to create a plane at an angle along this line which is already selected let me deselect so that line and we want it you can set your dihedral here if you want to um, it's it's up to you however you want to do it I personally like building all my assemblies first and then doing the dihedral it makes it a little bit easier to get your ribs perpendicular to the plane. I mean, you can do it the other way, but I just find this workflow a little bit easier. So now I'm going to create a sketch on this plane. Let me come in here. And we want to make sure that we project the very tip here. That should be it, because that should give us that point. And that's really the main thing that we need are the points. We don't necessarily need the line, but let's do all three and we'll be fine. And nope, I want the point. Okay, that's really all I need. Okay, so we got those projected. And then here is where you're going to create your shape off of these points. And again, I like to use control point splines. I find them that I can control them. Um, one of the things I want to do, well, let me get out of here. I want to, uh, I want to, I'm just going to put a little line right here. And I'm going to take that out to where my, um, I'll take this out. Let's make that this line. And then I am going to come over here. I want this. And I just want to put this out for my wingspan. And I don't know. Um, I got a 10 inch rib. Let's go with. Yeah, let's make a big wing. Um, let's go with. with um, 70 inch wingspan so 35 inches on the um, on the half span okay so now we, we know where we're gonna end up so let's um, come on in here and we're gonna start drawing this to there and then let's come over here and then And why am I using the wrong spline tool? I don't like that tool. I don't know why I did that. Okay. Yeah, I watched a video the other day on how these control point splines work. And um, it involves a little bit of math. If anyone's interested in seeing that video, let me know and I'll direct you towards it. All right. Now, one of the things we don't want this to come to a point, so I'm going to make sure that these are horizontal and all that good stuff. And. We want to make sure that's 35 inches. Lock that in place. And so whatever plan form you want to use, this is going to be a super high aspect ratio wing. But hey, that's no problem. Okay, so we have this. But what's going to happen, the sweep won't make this corner. So we have to kind of split it here somewhere and where our wing tip will be. So let's uh, let's draw a line here and close that off. Okay, and that that should do it. So now we just come in here to the sweep and select our profile. 
and we want to select this yeah you can see we're getting a mess here let me come back into this sketch and I'm gonna edit this sketch and I'm gonna do something see where it says break I want this this profile to break right there at this point and I'm gonna go ahead and break it right there at that point so now even though these are tangent with each other they're still separate pieces and that's what we want to do this okay so sweep and let's come here I think we need to go path and guide rail so let's select let's make this our path and let's make this our guide rail and we want to go full extents because we want it to go all the way to that line so there you have most of your um, your uh, your wing you just have to deal with the wingtip here and to do that you can loft from from here so we'll go loft and we'll loft this profile to this and that's going to give us some grief let's um let's cancel that let's go to surface and we'll create a surface loft on this edge to this edge let's see if that works and we have to go here and it doesn't like that either it's okay we can fix this um what can we do to fix this I really let's create a sketch on here because I want to bifurcate this um, nope that's not the one I want there we go I want that so now I've got two profiles here instead of one because what's happening is they're kind of colliding with each other so we've got two profiles here let's, we can probably go back into solid and create a loft here from here to here and that works now if you don't like this angle that we're looking at see it kind of goes down really sharp let's uh we, we can change it just a little bit by putting a plane where's our center plane and we're going to put a plane back right about the high point of this airfoil and all of this is hypothetical all of this is hypothetical this is just to kind of show you my method of doing this all right now let's project we want to project that body we can project or intersect on that that would work and we want to project um, this line and you can see this tip is a little further back let's go to uh, intersect let me get rid of that um, there we go so that's gonna come to right there okay now let's create a guide rail here and I didn't define um, these splines just because this is hypothetical all right and then let's do the same thing here now I do have one airplane that I'm going to uh, that I'm going to draw that I will like whole do the whole process it's for a plane that I'm gonna build all right so now we can come in here and let's go to loft and we want this profile this profile we want to add a guide rail we want this guide rail not smooth let's turn chain selection off turn that off because all we want and we missed the profile right there okay we'll fix that I'm glad I'm having all these uh, issues so you can see what I do here um, I'm gonna get rid of that let's get rid of that and if you notice what I did see where these lines are projected you see you get this little image of an old projector if you delete that it deletes that relationship between all that 
So now I'm going to go back into intersect and I want to intersect this body. And I think that's going to work. And also one dead giveaway that your point is not doing anything. You see how it's white? And of course I zoom in, it's not touching. So I'm going to come down there. Now it turned black. So that means it has somewhere to be in space. And that's what we want. We want it somewhere to be in space. And let's do the same thing there. So now we should be good. Yeah, okay. And those are black. So they'll be either black or disappear. They'll disappear when they're connected to another line that you drew. Okay, let's go to loft here, here. And now let's add rail. Make sure chain selection's off because we don't want that right here. And there you go. Now it's got a little bit more shape to it. And actually, I think I can even, no, I can't move that. Okay. So we say okay. Let me turn the sketch back on. You can move this after you draw stuff, which is kind of cool without having to go in and edit the sketch. All right, so let's create the loft for the bottom. And let's turn these off. We want this. And we want to connect to this. And we're going to add our guide rail, no chaining selection. And we should be good there. There you have it. Okay, so that's how you create a, an elliptical wing. And you would use the same process for a tapered wing. You would just, um, or you could use the same process for a tapered wing. You would just draw straight lines at whatever taper angle that you want. Um, one of the things that, yeah, you know, it, it did connect all this body. So now, you know, sometimes you may want your stringers to curve along this this leading edge, right? Or you want to stay at like the highest part of the um, of the uh, airfoil. Okay. So let's go back to our plane, this plane right here, and I'm going to create another sketch on this plane, and I'm going to start a point here. Let me um, let me project. I'm gonna project this body in there. Okay, so now let's go back to my control point spline, and then we're just gonna try to follow this. And I guess we could, you know, terminate it over there somewhere. All right, and we want um, we had well, we have 10 inches on this airfoil, so. We want this distance, and I'm guessing that the highest peak is probably at 30%. So I'm going to put this at 3 inches here. And on the rest of this, you're just going to have to try to... You could eyeball it, or you could actually draw lines at or stations in here. So you could actually get this to be accurate. Okay, so now we have this line here. What I want to do... So now what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to copy this body, okay, and I'm going to keep this one as my, uh, as the main one that I'm going to work. And I'm not going to move it from its location. I'm going to leave it right where it is so it matches exactly where the other is. So if I need to go in and make other bodies, I, I still kind of have a master, if that makes sense. So now let's go into surface, and I, well, we don't have to go into surface. We can do it right here. I'm going to go split body and we're going to split this body and we're going to split it with that line that we drew okay so now that's going to give us that's going to give us our guideline for our sweep for our spars so if you want to do your spars you would just come in here you would do your sketch and whatever size spar that you choose let's say eighth inch by quarter inch and that's what we got right there. We'll finish that sketch. And it's going to be hard to bend this wood like that. You probably need to go with a square spar versus a rectangular spar. But that's okay. And all we want is single path. And then we're going to choose our path right here. And it doesn't like that. Okay. For some reason. 
Let me see what we need to do. Let me go back to this sketch. I don't think it's because I made a um I made a uh, rectangle. It doesn't know what material I'm using yet. Okay, let's try this. And yeah, we want to go single path. No, single path profile. Oh, here we go. Did it like this one? No. This is probably a geometrical problem. Inconsistent information in the vertex attributes. Okay, that's fine. We can deal with this. This is good because now I'll show you my other method to uh, do this. So let's turn this other sketch back. Not this sketch. Is that the sketch? Yeah. The sketch on. And I'm going to remove part of this body. And I want to. So in this sketch. No, you want to turn the body off. This sketch. This sketch, we have our. The the tangent that we're going to, or the curve that is going to follow the top of the wing, but we have to have a curve that's, or not the top of the wing, but that's going to run parallel with our leading edge roughly. And then we need to have one that's going to follow the top of the wing. So what I'm going to do to do that, let's turn on, um, let's turn this on. I got whichever one I'm trying to turn on. This is the one I want. Okay. So now we basically need this curve. And this is going to show y'all how I do that intersecting curve thing. This is the perfect example. So what I want to do, I want to create, I'm going to have to create a plane at an angle on this line right here because I can't create a curved plane. So I'm going to say OK. Now, I'm going to create a sketch here, and let's project this body into here, okay? So let's turn the body off. So now, you see we have this top curve going this way, and then we have this other curve going this way. And what we need are these two curves to join up and be happy. And I'm going to show you how to do that. So now we're going to create a sketch. And it doesn't matter what plane you choose. Let's just choose this one. Now here I'm going to go up here to create project include intersection curve. And I'm going to select this curve because that's the way it goes across the top. And I'm going to select this curve because that's the way it goes across the front. And then I select OK. And I finish sketch. And now, you see, let's turn these other sketches off. It creates this where it goes down the top of our airfoil and it follows the path parallel. I didn't make one of these lines long enough. That's why it didn't go that way. So now what I want to do, I'm going to go plain along path. I'm going to select it. I'm going to bring it all the way up here. Hit, click OK. And I want to create a sketch there. And let's put our spar size here. Um, like this. And we can finish that sketch. Now, cross our fingers, we should be able to sweep this. And we just want single path, select our path, and boom. There you have it. You see how it curves. It does both curves at the same time when you do that intersection curve. I'm glad I, I, I'm glad it worked out here. I didn't have to bring up another model. So um, this this is a really good way to create stringers too on a lot of fuselages like you know warbirds that have some compound curves to the to your stringers. This is this is the method that you use. You draw your one side your left side or one side and then you draw your top and then you intersect those two together and there you have it so now you can bring your bodies back in and you can go ahead and finish out your wing like i showed in your other videos um you this is going to be a little bit different in that 
what I do in elliptical wings is I create offsets on my original sketch to create my leading and trailing edge. Like I can show you that really quick. Let's turn these bodies off. So here's my sketch where I have this and um, we can edit this now and it'll it'll go back and redo everything. So let's say you want your leading edge and you can do whatever with the tip, but let's say you want this leading edge to be, uh, uh, let's say um, three eighths thick, right? And you want this trailing edge, you're gonna make it uh, one and a quarter. I know somebody commented one time on, on my use of uh, archaic um, measuring system, but uh, I do live in the U.S. and I do use metric in a lot of my stuff, but because so much of the stuff here in the balsa wood that I buy has been mostly in um, standard sizes or whatever American sizes I I tend to still use that when I'm drawing airplanes okay so I just created offsets of these lines and then we're gonna close that and let's go ahead and bring our bodies back let's bring this one back and then you you'll just come in here and split body and select the um, the line that we just made and you'll come back in and get this other body and split this one with that line so just like that and there you can see you're starting to build your your wing and, and all its components and uh, there's our spar so hopefully that helps and like I said you can apply the same uh, workflow to um, you know, uh, tapered wings. Just, just the, instead of these ellipses, you can do tapers. Although, I do love the the graceful lines of elliptical wings, and they fly so nice. Um, it's really nice. But yeah, then you can go in and start breaking up all your stuff. Okay, and don't forget the intersecting curve. That you'll find that invaluable at some point. So one thing I can show. Well, I may even describe it. Um, you can loft two airfoils together. Um, so let's say you have, uh, you can get really weird with it. Let's say you have a NACA, you know, 0012, you know, full symmetrical airfoil here. And then you want to go to a Clark Y at the tip because you want to be able to generate lift at the tip so you don't have nasty stalls. I don't recommend doing that unless you really want to experiment. But what I do, I'll put my airfoil here but for some reason, and I haven't quite figured out why, when I go and use the uh, this data spline, and if I create a plane way out here to put it on, it doesn't quite work, and I'm not sure why. So I have to put it on the original plane, and I'll just make a real thin body, um, and then just move that body out to where I want it and adjust that. If, if any, well, let me show you how I would do that. Um, let's go back to here in case you're wondering where that is when you download it it should be under um, utilities add-ins scripts and add-ins and then it'll come up right here but also if you hit shift s on the keyboard it will come up that's shift s is for Mac I'm not too sure what it is on PC Oh, we don't want to create a script. We want to run a script. Okay, so here again, um, let's make this 8 inches and let's select our plane and then we'll say OK. And then we'll bring in this Clark Y. Okay, and I'm not going to change the incidence or anything on here just for this purpose of this uh, um, exercise. I'm going to edit this plane and come in here and close this off. Okay. And then we'll finish sketch. So here's where we have our our one plane. And we want a wingspan. We got an 8 inch airfoil. We could probably go uh, 48 inches for a decent um, 
aspect ratio, so I'm, I'm going to bring this out to 24. Not 224, 24. Okay, all right. So now, what I want to do, I want to put, let's say, let's say I want to build in some washout if I'm going to cut a foam wing or whatever, and it's going to be the same thing because we're going to loft the same airfoil, but we're going to change the angle of incidence out here, okay? So we're going to have um, less angle of incidence than what we have here. And I want to get this here. Now, I, I might be able to copy this, but it doesn't always work. So we'll copy this. I'm going to create a sketch here. And let's see if it'll paste it. It pasted it on our plane. Lovely. So now let's bring this down to 90 degrees, which is going to put us in line with that. But we want some washout. So let's go, let's go with the 3 degrees of washout 87 that's a lot let's go 89 there we go so now you can see that this is lower than this so this has less angle of attack than, than that part and the reason why you do that is so you don't get tip stall in case you're wondering so now we're going to uh, we'll finish that so now we can loft these. Let's see if it'll loft straight. Sometimes it will, sometimes it won't. It looks like it will. If not, you would have to come in here and put in guide rails. And to do that, let's just do that real quick. Because a plane, you can create a plane in three points, so it'd be here, here, and here. But this, the nose is different. All these are, at, it's, it's like a cattywampus plane. So what you can do in order to connect this to create guidelines, um, yeah, we can do this. So I'm going to go in here and create a sketch. It doesn't matter which plane you pick it. And I'm going to click on 3D sketch. Now 3D sketch will allow me to draw a line anywhere in space. And what I want to make sure I do, turn the origin off. i got to find a point on here and then I'm going to go way over there to my other um, profile and click the same point there so now there, there's that one and then here I want to draw a line dead center here to dead center here and there we go so we can finish that sketch. So now those lines, if we look at them, you can see like this one's up higher than that one and this one's actually a little lower, you know, so it it's kind of a cattywampus thing. So now when we create our loft, we should be able to use those as guide, as rails. Oops, I want this, I want that, and let's use that as a rail and let's use that as a rail and there you have it so now this wing if you look at it from the end you can see the trailing edge is up higher than your than your uh, on, on, on the tip than it is at the root and you can do the same thing with different airfoils maybe I, I still like the old Epler airfoils you might want a 208 on your root or a 193 at the root and a 208 out here you know, either way, whatever you're trying to achieve. I actually have a plane where a couple of models where I did that. Um, this Acromaster, hopefully it doesn't take forever to load. But, um, and then this will be it for this video. And I still have to show you the stuff that I got from Send Cut Send. And if you are anywhere that you can use them, Man, they are fantastic. They're fantastic for steel, aluminum, whatever you do, they can do it. All right, so this airfoil on this airplane, so I have a 22 NACA 20 or 2415 here, and then I have a 2418 at the root. And that kind of keeps the thickness pretty close. It's not exact, but it's pretty close to uh, it's pretty close to the same thickness throughout. And that kind of helps the tip generate a little more lift, especially when you have 
a tapered wing like this, you want there to be more lift out here, and that'll keep you from tip stalling. Yeah, and anyway, I hope I hope everybody got something out of this. Yeah, this is a I've got so many airplanes that are ready to cut. I need to I gotta start cutting some stuff and I'm gonna be busy. But anyway, um please subscribe, like my videos, um, share it with other modelers or people that have you know trouble learning fusion and, and like I always recommend when you're learning fusion, go to like spark plug. Uh there's that there's several really good entry-level tutorials and you may think well that's not what I want to learn but it's like anything when you learn those fundamental tools it's gonna help you with the other stuff that's that's basically what I did I beat my head against the wall trying to do this when I should have been spending more time on fundamentals and I'd have probably gotten along a lot faster but anyway I hope everybody's having a great year stay cool out there it's bloody hot take care guys